Tonight on 16 by 9, military style workouts pushing the limits. CrossFit is all about doing things that are scary. With life threatening risks. Go into renal failure and then potentially pack it in my kidney. And if you don't die, you might end up in uh, kidney failure and needing dialysis for the rest of your life. Right. They told me that I should like settle my affairs and get out of the family because it wouldn't it wouldn't get better. Like I would die. First, we begin with a craze surrounding new military style workouts. They go by names like CrossFit, Spartan workouts, and boot camp, and they promise to give you a sculpted body. But in some cases, working out to the extreme can be harmful and even fatal. Mark McAllister has the story. Boot camps, Spartan workouts, CrossFit, but that high intensity training can cause a very serious medical condition. We're talking kettleballs, we're talking burpees, endless amounts of using your own body weight to do sumo squats, push-ups, and it just went on for about 60 minutes with almost no break. Do you look at that experience, that one class, as something where you walked in to give it 110% or was there someone there who said you need to give it 100%? I think that the instructor and everyone in the room create a vibe that you have to give 100%. So she did, but at the end of the class, Jay was hurting. My legs were shaking. I found it very difficult to stretch. I knew that I had overdone it. The next day, Jay was in agony. I wake up and I can't put my arms back far enough to do my hair. I can't put my trousers on. I'm really struggling. Something's not right. She couldn't walk, let alone work. Her blood pressure spiked. Jay knew she was in trouble. So I called the doctor. And he said, you know, it's probably just the pain that's causing the high blood pressure. But it could be this very rare thing called rhabdo. A few medical tests and it was confirmed. Jay had that rare condition, rhabdomyalysis, sometimes called rhabdo for short, a condition brought on by trauma to the muscles. The doctor calls and he says, Jay, pack your bags, drive immediately to emerge. They're expecting you. Jay's muscle cells were dying, and if her rhabdo was not treated immediately, her kidneys could fail. She could even die. Rhabdomyolysis is the breakdown of muscle, so we have an outer coating on muscle, and if it's stressed metabolically or sometimes with trauma, it can rupture, and then some of the contents of muscle come out into the blood, which eventually can end up uh, damaging your kidney. Dr. Mark Tonopolsky studies rhabdomyolysis at his clinic at McMaster University Medical Center in Hamilton. Dr. Tarnopolsky showed us some level of muscle damage is normal after a workout, but there is a line when it becomes dangerous. When it becomes clinically relevant, which means that someone is so sore that they're having problems getting out of a chair, walking downstairs, or if they had urine that was turning red, tea-colored, brown, sometimes even black urine, uh, most people would be concerned enough to go to the emergency department. That's often the trigger. Dr. Tarnopolsky looks for signs of rhabdo by having patients exert themselves and measuring damage to the muscle. What we've shown is that um, when you do unaccustomed exercise, there is muscle damage. And then if we do muscle biopsies, what we see is there's inflammation in the muscle that starts about 24 to 48 hours later as those muscle fibers are degraded and then rebuilt. That's really what happens when we exercise. We cause a little bit of micro damage, we cause metabolic stress, and then the body adapts and we build bigger, stronger, better muscles. In Jay's case, she had gone too far working out to the point of needing hospitalization to fix the muscle damage she had done. Every single doctor and nurse I encountered said, I've never seen a CK this high in my entire career. I had never even heard of a CK level. I, don't, I didn't know what it meant, and I had never heard of rhabdo. CK, or creatine kinase, is a protein that leaks out of the muscle when it has been damaged. CK levels are measured to determine if someone has rhabdomyolysis, and Jay's CK level was dangerously high. Mine was over 95,000, uh, which is 
a, a very big number when 120 is what's normal. Doctors gave Jay IV fluids to rehydrate and flush harmful proteins out of her system. I would joke that I had Popeye arms only because they were so swollen and they were like blown up like balloons. It took several days before doctors could stabilize Jay's rhabdo and save her kidney function. They sent her on her way with a warning. My CK had come down enough that everybody felt satisfied that it was a one-off, um, that it had happened as a result of the extreme workout and that it was probably never going to happen again as long as I didn't overdo it again. But Jay wasn't in the clear just yet. Symptoms of rhabdo persisted. Many months later, my CK was still high. It had bounced back up to uh, in the thousands, 3,000s, 6,000s. I was very concerned about all sorts of elements of my future, you know, kidney health, physical health overall. So it was a really scary time. Today, it seems Jay is in good health. Her rhabdo symptoms gone. But since her ordeal, Jay is exercising one thing above all else, caution. I am much, much more careful now. I'm trying to grow back the muscle very, very slowly. Gentler, more moderate exercise. And for now, it seems Jay is back on track. No more Spartan workouts for her. I just think, after my experience, I just don't know how healthy those classes are. I just don't know that pushing yourself that hard and overworking your muscles is the right way to be fit. Next, a cartoon character used to symbolize a serious condition. There's a mascot named Uncle Rabdo in one of these programs. Are you serious? That is unbelievable. I know that sounds like a strong statement, but someone's got to take a stand because that is absolutely criminal. Spartan workouts, boot camps, CrossFit, military-style conditioning, marketed as a way to get fit fast. Get him up, he's up. Workouts inspired by the military that come with a risk of a military style medical condition, a serious one. It's called rhabdomyolysis, or rhabdo for short. Rhabdomyolysis was uh, probably first coming to medical attention during wars where people would have crush injuries or uh, they'd have a bomb blast or something would fall on the leg and there'd be a crush which would damage muscle from an external force and then the proteins would be released into the blood. Rhabdo is a breakdown of muscle fibers, leading to the release of myoglobin, a protein into the bloodstream. That can cause serious and even fatal kidney damage. Dr. Mark Tonopolsky is a rhabdo expert. The military is really where most of the research occurred. And so the U.S. military really were the folks who published most on, you know, what are the risk factors for rhabdomyolysis. Dr. Tarnopolsky says now, far from any battlefield, there's been a spike in people giving themselves rhabdo at the local gym with high-intensity workouts like CrossFit. So compare it to a military regimen. Would you do the same? I, I say there's probably elements that are very comparable to it. This sort of training certainly uh, attracts the stereotypical type A personality. John Vivian owns CrossFit Toronto. And we're trying to get as much work done in as little amount of time as possible. This mentality appealed to Devin Radcliffe. He was a 20-year-old soldier in the Canadian Forces, used to platoon workouts. And on his own time, he was doing CrossFit. I went hard. CrossFit is all about doing things constantly that are scary. With that culture, that mentality, Devin nearly killed himself. I was in great shape and just kind of wanted to take it to the next level, I guess, and go go as hard as I could. It was too much. It was like intense, like can't walk upstairs pain. But my mind, my mindset then was like, uh, you know, don't be weak. <laughs> so I, uh, so I just kept going and did um, like a week more of of CrossFit. After that week of punishing workouts, Devin couldn't ignore the signs of trouble any longer. My belly was, uh, was hugely swollen and distended. As the days went on, I, I was confused and um, really absent. My urine was red, which was, which was never a good sign. He called the military doctor and medical tests were done. So they sent me to a nurse to have my urine tested and um, the nurse was like, oh my God. He's like, I've never seen this much blood in a man's urine before. Devin's CK level or creatine kinase, an enzyme used to measure rhabdo in the muscles, spiked so high, Devin says it broke the CK machine. 
I was immediately admitted to hospital in Halifax. I was there for a week because uh, my CK levels weren't going down and um, I think it was like four days in and I'd plateaued at 128,000. That plateau was 10 times the normal CK level for men, putting Devon at a high risk of kidney failure. Doctors delivered a terrifying message. They told me that I should like settle my affairs and gather the family because they were probably gonna have to put me on dialysis and then it wouldn't, it wouldn't get better, like I would die. Doctors pumped Devon full of IV fluids, 24 liters to be exact. So I was like a, I was like a balloon, like just like full of water. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty gross. It was my own mental state and pride um, that had gotten me into this mess. CrossFit has gained popularity over the past few years with more than 7,500 CrossFit gyms worldwide. Rabdo is sometimes viewed as a badge of honor for pushing one's physical limits. I think that's a lot of the appeal that had this sort of this underground counterculture. With CrossFit's counterculture image come some pretty provocative mascots. Meet Pukey the Clown, the patron saint of a workout so hard you vomit. And then there's Uncle Rabdo. He pumps iron while hooked up to a dialysis machine, his kidneys dangling from his body. There's a mascot named Uncle Rabdo in one of these programs. Are you serious? That is unbelievable. I know that sounds like a strong statement, but someone's got to take a stand because that is absolutely criminal. I mean, there's just no question that whoever is idiotic enough to make fun of a real medical condition is just setting themselves up for a major lawsuit. The whole notion behind the mascot is, again, to bring awareness without scaring the hell out of everyone. I don't think it's an intent to, to make light of rhabdo. I think it's, it's um, sort of a lighthearted way of, of bringing it to the surface. But Dr. Tarnopolsky says there's nothing lighthearted about getting rhabdo. Go into renal failure and then potentially pack in my kidney. And if you don't die, you might end up in re uh, uh, kidney failure and needing dialysis for the rest of your life. In fact, a trainer has been sued successfully for $300,000 in relation to a CrossFit-type workout. In 2005, U.S. All-Navy wrestler Makimba Mims got rhabdo. Although CrossFit itself was not sued in the lawsuit, the company commemorated the court case with this. A workout named after its rhabdo victim. The Makimba includes dumbbell thrusters, air squats, and burpees. At CrossFit Toronto, John Vivian has seen cases of rhabdo too. We've had a couple that have had, uh, that have had rhabdo. How do you deal with it? We verbally discuss it with them on the first day. Plus, we've also structured our boot camp to slowly ramp people up um, in their training. That's really the biggest thing we can do is, is try to educate our folks. We don't downplay it too much, too fast, too soon. It's a part of our, our members' manual that everyone, everyone receives when they start here. The trainers obviously are watching for signs of, of people going too far, white-faced, uh, eyes glazed over, kind of loss of focus, wandering around in a bit of a daze. I mean, these are, these are clear signs that people are pushing themselves too far. For Devin Radcliffe, a rhabdo survivor, he is now much more aware of his limits. I think the dirty flip side to CrossFit is the insatiability of it. The fact that, you know, men will die for points. The mascot names Uncle Rabdo in one of these programs. Are you serious? That is unbelievable. I know that sounds like a strong statement, but someone's got to take a stand because that is absolutely criminal.